Hello, hello. We are live. Hey. Um. Yeah. What's up? This is my third stream. Uh, no, actually fourth. Yeah, fourth stream. Um, and this is a continuation of the simple text adventure game that we are making in Julia using ChatGPT because I'm not a great storyteller, uh, story writer rather. Okay, so last time we had um, we had this simple um, we had created this simple Julia source file. Uh, where, uh, okay, let me actually first set up the chat. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Where do I see the chat? I can see the chat. Let me just test it out as well. Okay, I can see the chat on my phone. So that works. Cool. So yeah, last time we had created this simple file where uh, we were having scenes as function calls. So we we had the start function, right? And this like our driver code called this function and then we were uh, this is called the welcome player, which uh, took a user, like took a name of a character as input and then uh, printed something. And then when we press enter, we go to the next scene. Actually, let me just uh, show how it looked. So. Right, so Julia run game. All right, so enter the name of a character, let's say Sid. And welcome to the game, Sid. Press enter to continue. And we have the scene where we find ourselves standing at the entrance to a mysterious cave. And we can choose to either enter the cave or turn around and run away. Uh, so let's just turn around and run away because that's what I implemented last time. Um, and we accidentally run into a bear and we can either stay calm or shout at the bear. So we'll stay calm and then the bear looks at you and suddenly places a hand on your shoulder and it tries to walk you towards the cave. Uh, yeah, uh, that was all that I had implemented. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so this time, um, so there are two, so one is like actually getting a good story, um, which I'm doing, like I'm doing after something and that something is to make it a little more um, user friendly to sort of create this story, right? So I had a discussion with a couple of my friends who suggested that I make it into a more reusable um, piece of code wherein the story part of it can sort of be in a markup file separately and then the logic can sort of take it and then like take the entire file as an input and then run through the logic of like choosing what either of the options and then going to um, the next next uh, scene right and initially i did not start with that um, Oh, wait, I wanted to on this. So initially I just like, we just started off directly with um, writing out functions and then having all this in print statements directly, right? Like basically executing what, like writing what would be actually executed, right? Um, and I had a couple of reasons for this. One was that I did not find this as unreadable, right? Uh, 
like personally i found it to be fine to just have all this text and options in the way they are here in code right um, that way i can see exactly what the logic is and change if uh, anything happens and like debug it easily and so on right because it's all just code the other reason was that later on if i wanted to have any sort of advanced functionality um uh, let's say like randomly generate like randomly generating a number and based on that choosing uh one or the other choice then that's something uh i can easily do in code right uh i can pretty much do whatever i want in code whereas with a different markup file i would then have to think of a way to encode that logic in the markup file and then be able to execute it using the engine right um but i think there's still value in going the engine route um firstly because i do not have any plans for an advanced setup where i like need to do anything complex right uh, like generating a random number or something like that right um so at this point all the story is is a simple state machine right so you have some text printed so each scene is a state actually let me get my tablet one second okay oh, sorry okay so so you had seen last time that this is like a state machine right so there is some state uh let me make it a square right and there's something printed here and then there are let's say two options and based on these options you could take one of these paths and you will go to a next state where there'll be something else printed there and there may be like let's say three options and then based on these options you'll get paths um right and we could also have um some of these sort of get back into the same state right uh like a choice here and a choice here both could lead to the same state right um and this this is like the structure is like a dag right directed a cyclic graph right um it has directed edges and we don't want any cycles here because we don't want user to just keep looping through a single um sort of section in the story right we want the story to end in a finite number of steps so we have this dag structure and this is sort of essentially a state machine right each of these is a states right and these are uh these arrows are the transitions right um and you can start in a state and then you'll hop on to some other state based on what the user chooses right so right now if that's all that i care about and my state is just some text printed and some options printed right and my actions are just like i select one or the other option then this can be nicely separated out in a different markup file right i don't have to sort of encode any logic behavior like i don't need to generate this uh, state machine dynamically or i don't need to sort of modify this text right like right now if 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 you are dealing with that simple case where i don't need to do that then it can be nicely done and we need not sort of worry about um our game engine becoming too complex or like very hard to write and so on right um so for now that's what i'll do and i do believe that for longer stories this will significantly improve readability right and in fact earlier the sort of text adventure or choose your own adventure games came in the form of books as well right so like a book is just like you have a static thing right it does not the text in the book does not change and so let's say you start at page 1 and then based on the options it'll redirect you to some other page right and all that is sort of like defined beforehand right 
um so at least that that's something that we can replicate with this style right so our engine will take a file which contains the story right in some sense uh, like all the text for the story uh, which is all static um, and then i can use that and sort of run through it with the code right okay so that was the description for this mm. yeah so i want to be able to separate all the data from the code essentially right um now there are like multiple uh, sort of markup formats available which i can use to put this data in the like i can use that format right for example json is one common one javascript object notation right and uh, there's another one called yaml y a m l which uh, i think stands for yaml ain't markup language and uh, i think there's one more full form yet another markup language i'm not sure which one of them is actually uh, the one but yeah and the main difference between the two uh, is at least from our perspective is readability right uh, yaml so json has a lot of curly braces right we can actually look at an example so um let me see oh tvnet no one for me to ban here yeah yeah there's no one else here right now i think oh it shows me like two viewers i don't know if it's you and me or um just give me a second Okay, I am back hopefully. Uh yeah. That was a friend calling. Anyways, um so we I was going to show the difference between YAML versus JSON, right? Um how they look and the difference in their readability. So let's see. Mm, YAML versus JSON example. Let's just see maybe images if someone has a side by side comparison is this it no this is not okay this is a simple example mm, so for example this, this uh, the, the leftmost is xml that's another way we can we could have used but it has these tags and all and which looks a little um uh, not clean <laughs> right uh second is json this has these sort of uh, curly braces and uh, square brackets right this sort of format and all these three i believe are representing the same data right and on the right we have yaml yaml looks much cleaner uh, it separates out its components using like tabs and like indentation basically instead of uh, brackets right um so this seems much more readable and that's why i'll be going ahead with this because the main sort of reason of separating out data is there are two things one is to make it readable and easily editable um and to not have a lot of clutter um especially if the logic does not require anything complicated right if it can be representable easily in this format then why not right so that was one of the main things um and the other was so that i can reuse the same engine to write more stories in this form so i just create a yaml file for it and then the engine can run that provided it follows certain specifications right um yeah so um, so let's start uh, separating this out um like separating all the 
data here out and then see i'll create a new file let's say story.yaml and uh, what i'll do now is initially i'll just copy paste everything then delete stuff from here that's not needed um, yeah right now by the way i don't think i want to have this like enter the name of your character um, because this requires sort of embedding this kind of information or like dynamic information in the string right so in the yaml file i'll need to specify that hey the string is actually welcome to this game and some character name that will be generated at runtime right now let's just not deal with it uh, so i'll just remove it i'll just do like welcome to the game um, no character name right um yeah right um press enter to continue yeah this is fine mm. well this is not needed this is some story element right um actually what function was this this was cave entrance function right i just write maybe like cave entrance here and these are its choices um and here choice one not implemented right so let me just actually have this right now as not implemented yeah i'm just trying to mm, separate out all the text that'll get printed right in the game which is essentially our data mm. wait why was this invalid choice here let's see welcome player actually i should not maybe do it this way I should do it one by one uh, yeah, let's just do it one by one. So ignore everything below. Uh, actually, let me just remove it. it is, yeah, otherwise it'll become very fast and I won't be able to explain things properly. Let's just start with a fresh YAML, right? So in YAML, um, I'll it's like key value pairs, right? And then I can also have a list of things. So it's like either a dictionary or a list, right? a very basic thing i mean that that's all we are probably going to need so that's all we care about right now so for a key value pair uh, if this is the key uh, like whatever is inside here this could be like value right and this value could have like inside value or something right um or like it could just have the value right this is value okay v and this is a string this v right um this need not be put into double quotes which is another sort of nice thing like keeps things clean and if i wanted multiple values uh we will sort of have uh, uh these hyphens right so this would be like keys and then this thing right um so these are value one v one and value two v two right um also we are going to use a package called yaml.gl which is going to parse this into a data, a data structure for us to use in the code right so actually let's just see what this gets parsed into right this is a very simple thing so um, let me move this aside um so i'll do julia and i will start a project in this activate a project here in this directory right and this will like the project file here will store our configs so first i need to add the package yaml 
right? Let this get installed. I could also open it here, the readme for this package, right? So this is like another example, YAML file, right? Um, yeah, so this will be key value, key value, and so on. Um, there are a few other uh, sort of syntax like things as well. For example, this pipe character is used to represent multiple lines of text in a nice way, right? So if I did not have this, what I would have done is to have double string, uh, like the double quotes around this and have backslash N, right? But uh, this is a nice syntax because we'll probably be needing multi-line uh, text, right, in our game for a scene. So this is helpful. Mm. And the way we load a file is this yaml.load and this will pass it. That, for now, that's all we need. So, okay, this got installed. So if I do import YAML and let's say story equal to yaml.load story.yaml. Mm, story. What was that? Oh, it's load file, is it? Okay, it's load file. Uh, okay, I think load just does a uh, string, right? For most purposes, uh, which takes a string. Okay, yeah, so load passes a string, but we want to sort of load a file. So it's load file. Uh, load file. Right, so we get this thing, which is a dictionary. Um, and the first key is keys and this maps to an array, right? So the square bracket here, these the inside it are the elements of an array and each of them is of type dictionary from any to any. And we have two dictionaries here, which is value one mapping to V1 and value two mapping to V2, right? Right now we'll not worry about type instability here because our, com like our application is not that complex. So just ignore all the any to anything. Uh, if we really wanted to optimize it, we could, but we don't need that. So I won't worry about that. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is what it was, right? So this was the key. And then these two are elements of an array and each of them is a dictionary, right? So this is a dictionary which has one item, which whose key is value one and whose value is V1, right? Um, I could also for example, have, uh, I don't know, let's say Apple one mapping to A1. And then, uh, oh, actually I don't want to do this. So we want two elements. This will be one dictionary and then this will be the other dictionary, right? Um, Apple two mapping to A2, right? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we have two elements and uh, each of the two elements is a dictionary. And the first dictionary has two items. One is value one mapping to E1 and apple one mapping to A1. And the other dictionary, uh, which is the other element in this array of dictionaries is value two mapping to V2 and apple two mapping to A2, right? And so on. For now, this, yeah, this is just a simple primer on YAML. Um, okay. So how we will um, construct our scenes is, let's say, for example, we have uh, scenes, right? Which is an array of scenes and each scene will have a tag or like a name, let's say, right? And this name should be unique because we'll be using this name to 
map uh, like from one scene this action like if you take this scene this action in this scene then go to that other scene right so here each of these scenes uh, each of these scenes right mm. actually this is the same arrow so let me do like this right each of these scenes has a name um it has the options in it right um so name and options right for um oh also also the text right so options will come later first we'll have name then like some text to print right and then finally the options okay um for now that's all we need and for an option it needs to know like it needs to know what next scene to go to right um, if that option is selected and the text in that option itself right so for example um, Choose your own adventure. So here, if I do, see it? Yeah. So, so there are two options, right? Um, and it has like each of the options has some text corresponding to it, and it'll also need to store information about where to go next if i select that option right so for example if i select this option it needs to know that okay the next scene is this this one right um so so options uh will be like a list right and they will need to contain information about um, the next scene or rather like name of next scene and the other thing is uh text right for that option that is pretty much it i think um i don't think we need anything else so for now let's just start with this simple format mm. yeah So we have scenes and each scene will have three things. It'll have a name, it'll have a, a text associated with it, and it'll have a list of options, right? Um, and so let's say the first scene, right? The first scene is the welcome, welcome player scene, right? Um, let's use this as the name of the scene, right? That's what we used earlier. So this will have um, welcome player. This is the name of the scene and it has some text and that text is um, welcome to this game. Press enter to continue, right? And we can use the multi-line thing using the pipe character. Mm. And we will not have this character name for now, right? So it'll just be this static thing. Welcome to this game. Press enter to continue, right? And in this one, in the first scene, we are just pressing enter to continue. There are no options. So we... Uh, we can leave this empty. Mm. Now, do we want to leave this empty or do we want to not have it all together? Mm. I think it's best to not have it all together. Mm. Yeah, because just having this and then having it empty doesn't really make much sense so let's not have it all together right uh, so basically if that key 
called options is not present. That means there are no options in that scene. And like pressing enter will just continue, right? Um, we can, yeah. Uh, so this press enter to continue. We can have it here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so this is the first scene, right? Right now we are just listing out the scenes in a list, right? Uh, so there's the one scene, then this other scene called cave entrance. So um, so this is the second element, right? So which is where this second dash, its name is cave entrance. And its text is this thing, which is You find yourself standing at the entrance to a mysterious cave, choose wisely and do you and then whatever, right? Um, I don't know if this, uh, this colon here will cause an issue or not. We'll find out. Mm, and then it'll have options. Um, and it, it has two options, right? These are the two options. So I can Yeah, these are the two options, right? Um, yeah, let's just pass this and see if there are any errors. So story equal to yep. So uh, it was uh, expected block end found this thing at line nine. This is line nine. Yeah, I think this thing might be causing some error. Let me just remove it and then see. Okay, this seems to work. My face is coming in the way. Let me move it up. Hmm. So, oh, it uh, it's like this. Let me print story of scenes so it has two elements one is the dictionary name of the scene is welcome player text is this thing mm. and in the second one it's this options uh, enter the cave to explore its secrets Okay, options is okay. This first thing will have a name, right? Name is cave entrance. Text is this thing. And uh, there are two options which are put in an array, right? Mm. One thing actually I notice here is in in the first scene, right? We have these backslash n backslash n's <laughs> appearing. Uh, because it's a multi-line string, right? So here, so it's like this backslash n and then a backslash n for this empty line and then a backslash n in the end here, right? So there are three backslash n's, right? One in the end and two in between. Whereas if we had a single line text as we had in the other scene, we do not have that. We have just, uh, yeah, we don't have a backslash n in the end. Mm. So these two backslashes, they are actually needed. Um, but this one is not, right? Because these two are the way the writer wanted them to get printed, right? So if the writer wants like more spaces here, then it should appear that way. Um, but a backslash in the end here is not needed. Yeah, because if the writer wanted, they could just do this, right? Add an extra line. Actually, I don't know if this will work. Will this work? Mm, let's see. Let's pass this. I don't think so because, uh, yeah, let's see. Let me just add a few lines here. Then let's see. Mm, yeah, there is just, yeah, there are multiple in between, but there's just one in the end. I think we can strip that away. Mm. 
let's just say we don't have that feature right now. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever need it because this is all the text there is. And then between the text and, okay, if between the text and options, if the user wants more space, like different space for each scene, then that is something they cannot do right now. Mm. Yeah, which is fine. We'll ignore it for now. So, but, uh, but the backslash in here in this end, this we need to strip away, right? Um, or add one here. I think it's just better to strip away this one. I think there is a function to do that. We'll get to it when we need it. Uh, also for this, do you think, right? I would like to have the colon. Um, so we just put it in, oops, we, we'll, we just put it in, uh, is it like this? We'll just put it in. Hmm. Yeah, we just put it in double quotes. We're just figuring out how to do it in Vim. Um, yeah, and then we can use this colon. This should work. Yes, we have the colon and it got passed correctly, right? So that's fine. Mm -hmm. So this, this way we can list out our scenes. So let's just add the other scenes as well quickly. So we added cave entrance and oh, also wait, we need to add options, right? So we just added this thing, which is just the text in those options, but we need to encode what other, like what the next state will be if the user chooses this option, right? So option is not just this, it's something else. Uh, so it has a text, which is this thing, and it has next scene, right? And in this case, if it's entered the cave, right? This was choice one, we had not implemented it, so Next scene will be mm, let's say end scene. We'll have some end scene or some error scene, let's say. Um, do you want to have it? Mm. It will just be a issue while parsing or something, right? Okay, let's just add an error scene here, which is says error. Name of the scene is error. Actually, you can just call it error. Okay, so this will go to that. We'll just print error. Okay. Mm. Should we call this next scene? That's fine. Then should we call this scene name? No, why call it scene name? We already know that this is a list of scenes. So this name and this text are the name and scene, uh, name and text of the scene. Sorry. Mm, so we don't need that. But here, these options, yeah, here I think it makes sense to have next scene. So that's fine. Um, so this will be second option is this thing. Um, and its next scene is next scene is run into bear. Right, so it's run into bear. Okay. Mm. Yeah, let's pass this. 
and see if there are any errors or not okay no errors so you have scenes three scenes the error scene the this thing um welcome player scene and third is third is the name so the yeah, cave, cave entrance it has some text it has options which is again an array first element is this dictionary text next scene and then second thing okay seems fine mm. okay let's add the other remaining ones so next is run into bear run into okay we have quite a few let's uh yeah let's just add them actually and then we'll write the code to jump around between scenes run into bear mm. this is like this one right so this is run into bear it's text is this thing and its options are to stay calm or to shout at bear right um and if we stay calm then what happens we call the stay calm function and we shout at bear we call the shout at bear function okay um so here the next scene would be stay calm and next scene would be shout at bear right next is we need to implement stay calm mm -hmm. so right now it just says press enter to continue So nothing, nothing implemented for that one, right? Uh, so we'll just go to this error scene again. Actually, what happens here? This guy also has no options. So there should be a next scene, something, right? What happens when you press enter? You should go to something. Mm. So if it has nothing, then it goes directly to the error scene, let's say. So here we do need to put something, but there are no options. So what, but we need to specify where to put it to, where to send after this scene, right? Mm. We could have a next scene here, like as an element, and then say, okay, cave entrance, something like that, because we wanted to go to cave entrance, right? Mm -hmm. So we could either directly have next scenes, or we could have option, options, and then in options could be two. Could we do text empty and then um, next scene, something like this? Could we do? Right. So this one where we do specify options, but there's just one option um, which has no text and it's just like next scene. You could put this press enter to continue as the text for this option. How about that? Hmm. Then we need not have to deal with this case of having next scene as a key in the scene dictionary. 
so how will this look this will look like actually i have the code here right and this will so i'm here in the beginning and this will look actually let me just play the game once to remind myself how the other one looks So right now it's this uh, okay uh in this one i have like this right so no space here and then like a space angle bracket space and then text something like that it'll look okay i think we can do that also one more thing i just noticed that there was a cursor hidden the cursor was hidden when i used terminal menus options um yeah, I could do that manually in this one, but I think this is a nice way to just have a single option and then um, have it like this, right? Also, it's welcome to this game. Now can be single line as well. Nice. Yeah, so this basically has a single option. It says press enter to continue. Next scene, cave entrance. Uh, the error scene, what does the error scene have? The error scene has nothing. It's like a default terminate or something, right? Instead of calling it error, maybe you should call it terminal or something like, um, like the default terminal scene. Or we could just leave it at error for now. Uh, yeah, whatever. Mm. Mm. Should I? Yeah, okay. Yeah, if you just look at the readability of this thing, this looks nice, right? So I was, I have bought like four scenes here. Um, and here, like I can barely fit two right with all the code it does seem readable like and it's also easy to navigate for example if i have this let's say this scene right um error or something i could just wait, search for it in the file and then i can go to that right um yeah okay so what was the next thing in cave entrance, we did cave entrance, right? Uh, run into bear. Did we finished run into bear? Yeah, we finished run into bear. I think we have stay calm. Yeah, yeah, this is where we cave. Uh, okay, stay calm. Stay calm, people, stay calm. So this will be like this, actually. Oops, did I speak too loud? I think uh, the mic should be fine using like some nice whatever configurations that I saw online. For streaming anyways so stay calm should be like this like similar to welcome thing right uh if you stay calm then it has this text and it has a single option will be like press enter to continue and then we'll go to error Right, because we have not implemented it, I believe. Okay, we have enter cave. Did we implement enter cave? Okay, we did implement enter cave. Okay, so we have it. Um, so enter cave. And the other was shouted bear. Shouted bear. Shouted bear and And here we have the option of nothing. It says press enter to continue and enter cave. Press enter to continue, enter cave. Okay, so the same. Okay. Uh, and finally we have enter cave. Enter cave has you enter the cave, dance with the bear, happy ending. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that one basically has no options again, right? Mm. 
So it's like this one. It's like a terminal scene, right? It's also a terminal scene. Basically, after this, something ends. Do we want to do something for terminal scenes? So here is like happy ending, let's say. And uh, the text for it is you enter the cave, dance at the bears. And happy ending, right? Do we want a common way to treat these two, which are terminal states? Because everything else needs to have an option, right? So even the ones where there's not really an option, this is a single thing. Present return continue. Those also we have um, modeled to have an option, right? So this one, does it need to have an option? Does it need to have an option? I mean, not really. Happy ending. It, it should be something like maybe like press exit to press exit to end the game or uh, press enter to end the game something like that right uh, and then actually one thing we can do is we could have a special scene name which is like terminal or like game over let's say right uh, so this is like a keyword sort of thing uh, and press enter to exit right Yeah, so basically these terminal um, scenes will <clears throat> have their next scene as game over, which is not really seen because like, it'll be like, we'll check every time, right? Uh, if the next scene is game over, then we just end the game, right? Um, so we like this need not have any data. It's not actually a scene, it's like a keyword. Um, but should we have, should we call this as a, like, should it be next scene mapping to game over or should it be um, like is over is true or something, right? I mean, it's the same as ha like, If I add something like this, right, like an extra key to say that this thing terminates the game, will I need to handle it for everyone else? I mean, it's the uh, same thing. I'll have to handle it one way or the other. Either I do it by checking whether the next scene is called game over or whether there is a key card is over which is set to true in that scene what's an issue with having next scene as game over it could mean that you cannot use game over as a scene name. But that's the only disadvantage, I guess. Okay, what's the disadvantage of having is over as a boolean value separately, right? So is over is a key which maps a boolean which says whether game is over or not. So if I have this Will I need to add is over like equals false in every other place? Mm. Okay, for now we just go with this next scene is called game over. Game over is a reserved keyword. Don't use it. Uh, yeah, okay. And we'll see if, uh, I mean, we can always change our mind later if we need to. 
so we got all the scenes right i think we got all the scenes okay let's parse this thing and see if there are any errors or not okay it gets parsed dictionary yeah it has a lot of stuff i'm not going to check it like this um at least it gets parsed right so in uh, let's go back to our engine engine um and what should this do we we need to change this thing entirely oh also by the way this was all in branch initial experiment um i did push this to the remote repository but i have not merged it yet so actually should i merge it to master let me just maybe merge it to master mm. so that that's like an initial experiment thing like that's that's sort of separate right what we are doing right now it's separate we are actually trying to make the engine so we'll do it in a separate uh, branch so initial experiment mm, attribute and pull request design simple scene structure using function calls yeah that's fine okay and squash and merge delete branch cool it's here mm. let me Uh, by the way, I have these aliases set up. So GFO means git fetch origin. Um, GCH means git checkout. So I'll check out master and then merge. Um, origin master with it. So git rebase origin master. And if I do git log, which is GL, I see these two. Oh, okay, so this has been merged successfully. Now, mm, I'm going to create a new branch called creating engine, right? And uh, I'm used to having uh, different workspaces. Should I just put this aside maybe? Yeah, I put the repel aside. Yeah, for now. So, where was I? Yeah, so this one, right? This file, we need to make it into an engine. Mm. So we need to, okay, actually for that, we so we are using a couple of packages here, right? Let's add them to the project files first. Um, so we have the project files. Uh, I mean, let's add the project files to the repository first. So, yep. If I look at project, it has YAML right now, right? Let's also add repel to it. So I'll go to the terminal and add repel package. This will add an entry into project.toml. And then we can add both these project files into like we can commit them to the repository so and i'll just commit both of them mm, first and we'll call this add project files right now we can use those packages um here i mean we could use them earlier because I added, like they were already in the project file. Like REPL was not there, but REPL comes with a standard library. So I think you can directly use it without having to explicitly add it um, in a project. The other thing is import, import YAML, YAML. Mm -hmm. 
these things we need start function yeah we'll have some start function so let's keep it uh it'll not be welcome player though it'll be something else mm. these kinds of things we need printing and all blah 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 all this we need for now i'll just take all of this and just comment out everything let's start by um contents equal to yaml dot load file and we load story dot yaml we can pass this as an argument but we'll do that later for now i'll just hard code it to story dot yaml and then i'll just print contents let's see if this works Hmm. This is at least no error. Seems like the file was parsed. Okay. Now, um, what does the file look like? So this is like uh, it has scenes and then it has uh, a list of scenes, right? So, so let's say. Scenes. Mm. Do you want to have a dictionary? So for the jumping logic, right? One way would be to like use like a graph sort of data structure for this, um, right? Graph data structure for this kind of state machine. But a simple way is to just use a dictionary. Right or a hash map, because we know that each scene has a unique name. We can just use it to so it'll be just like a dictionary, let's say, right? So it'll, scenes, right? It'll be a dictionary, and then we'll do like whatever um, scene name, right? Whatever the name is, name. Um, like this, we can go from the like current scene. So this will actually be current scene. This will not be scenes. Right. So in fact, it'll be the, so option has this information. Right? We'll have to sort of get this information from the option, uh, but we can use this to jump around to the next scene. Mm -hmm. And a scene is nothing but a dictionary, right? Which has text and uh, yeah, like it has an, its name, it has its text and it has a list of options. Okay. Cool. Let's. So, um, contents of scenes. This is a, a list of scenes. And what we want to do is to make a dictionary of scenes. We'll call it scene graph. Uh, yeah, okay. Why not? Let's call it scene graph. This is a dictionary. Um, for now, we'll just say any to any, right? And this thing is a list, right? And for each element of this list, we need to sort of fill this up, right? So for x in this thing, right? So this is actually for scene, let's say, right, for scene in this thing. Um, oops, no, this is Julia, so end, right? For scene in contents of scenes, which is a list of scenes, we take the scene and we get its name and we use this name as a dictionary, right? And have that as um, like that scene name as a key in the scene graph which maps to that scene let's uh let's print the scene graph 
actually if i do display it as it i think this should maybe print it in a nice way scene graph let's see here also display okay this is the second thing this is the first thing first thing is not look very nice second thing looks nice because i don't know why actually whatever mm. actually let's figure out why uh what is the type of this thing is it oh is this a list it, This thing is a dictionary any to any with seven entries oh yeah maybe it's printing but this is also a dictionary right the first thing is also a dictionary and then type of scene graph I should have maybe done info or something okay this shows dictionary with one oh maybe i did not save the file was that the issue it could be because now it, this thing is printing nicely uh at least relatively nicely it has this one element which is indented previously it was all just together um i think that was the issue i did not save the file uh type of contents yeah dictionary any 20 dictionary any 20 okay anyways let's go back remove this don't need contents anymore. Display scene graph. This is what we care about. Okay. Um, oh, also in the story, we should like instead of having a uh, like welcome player is the thing that we want to sort of start with, right? Um, let's keep a keyword for it called start scene. Mm, and then we can call game over as end scene and let this be the convention because otherwise the engine will need to know that, hey, I need to start from welcome player, which uh, like seems a little more like specific, right? Um, uh, yeah. So let's not let us not let the engine worry about it and let's just uh, have a convention. So we'll call this as start scene and then we can call game over scene as the end scene. So display scene graph, um, we need to start with the start scene, right? So scene off. No, it's scene graph of scene graph of start scene. This is a scene. And uh, the first thing we need to do in a scene, actually before that, we need to clear out the screen and all that, right? Um, so this thing, right? This will clear out the screen and move the cursor to the origin. And we will do this. So start scene. We need to print the text in that scene, right? So this off text will be the text. And we need to print line this thing, right? And then we need to print its options, right? So um, print its options. That printing its options thing is done by... Um, done by this thing, uh, the terminal menus functionality, right, already does it for us, right. Um, 
So here you just need to give the choices, right? Um, So the first choice, oh, actually, yeah, first choice is, ah, okay, we have those as uh, like numbered, right? So that's fine. So choices we can have, actually should uh, it should maybe like options, right? Because that's what was used. Or choices seems nice because, yeah, choices seems nice. It's choose your own adventure game, right? So we'll choose it. We choose a choice. Choices. I'll have to change it everywhere here. Options, right? Mm, choices, right? Uh, yeah. This of choices, these will be the choices. I don't need to print this. These are just the choices. Um, I do need to make it into an array to feed to this function here. So, so this will be like text for text in, uh, no, actually it'll be like choice of, I mean, text of choice, whatever. This thing for choice in choices, right? Um, yeah, so choices is an array, right? Which we get from here, so scene graph of this thing. These are the choices, choices in that scene. Text equal to this thing. Right, choices is this thing. Um, actually, you know what? I can have a function here. So name is equal to start scene function do scene. This will take name. Uh, actually, it'll take the scene graph and it'll take a scene and it'll do what needs to be done until we reach the end scene. Uh, actually, I'll come to that later. First, let me not go all over the place. Let me just do something. Um, yeah, uh, let me just get something working. So text is this thing, right? Start scene of text, choices are start scene of choices. Actually, this I can at least do. This is fine. Name. Right. Um, so that scene, text, it's choices. And the this is the choice that the user would have chosen, right? So it'll be TM to request, radio menu choice of text for choice in choices. It should be fine, right? And then what I need to do is I need to jump to the scene corresponding to this choice. So it'll be scene graph of choices of the choice that they chose. Um, I don't need to do, yeah, I need to do it. Uh, scene graph of this thing of choice and then in the choice, I have next scene, right? So this will be my next scene, correct? Mm. So my scene is equal to scene graph of name, right? And I'll do scene of text, scene of choices, uh, and then for choice in choices, choice of text, next scene will be 
this of uh, and this will be a different scene this will be the next scene right now how do we test this should i just print stuff oops okay be previous So I need to do this process in a loop until I encounter mm, until I encounter the end scene, right? So name is start scene it starts with start scene and while name is not equal to end end scene, keep going, right? Um, and first thing we need to do is get the scene from the scene graph get the text the choices all this will be fine this will be fine and when i get all this uh, actually before getting this choice i need to print the text and the choices uh, choices will get printed here with this so after text i need to print the text right so print line of text right and then this choices and then this one the tm dot request of the radio menu this will print the choices automatically like the print the text of the choices i'll get some number um, and that i can use to get the next scene then what then i'll have name is equal to next scene actually i did not do this because this will be done i just need the the name of the next scene right so i just i can just directly do this like name equal to um this of so not scene graph basically because that scene graph like um getting the scene from the scene graph is done in the beginning in the loop right here basically so what will happen is in the end i'll get a name this will or oh, like override the name variable um, choices of choice of next scene this will be the name of the scene it'll go here it'll check if it's not the end scene then it'll um i forgot the word dereference no not dereference. but it's basically in, get the value at this index right um hmm. And if it is end scene, then we are here and we can end basically the program will end. Yeah. Oh, also this needs to be done. Uh, here. And just before printing anything for that scene, we'll do this. I think we can comment out these. Okay, let's run it. There will probably be some error. Hmm. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, I think we saw this last time as well. It's about the scope. Hmm. I think I can... Do I need to mention global here or outside? The name is off scope is ambiguous because Google will be the same name exists. It has a new local. I think I can do global name and then this should work. I think. Okay. Nice, welcome to the game. Press enter to continue. Find yourself, blah, blah, blah. Okay, turn away. Nice, nice. It seems to be working. Move my camera to the side. Hmm. Okay.
okay in the end we get some error that key enter cave is not found enter cave is not found did we not add that scene enter cave oh yeah we have it as a next scene but we don't have it um don't have it uh, uh we have not like implemented it yet so instead of that i'll just do happy ending yeah because enter cave is happy ending actually i should maybe have so this one is actually called enter cave right in enter cave there happens a happy ending so enter cave yep Okay, this seems to work. At least this branch. Let's see. Let's first maybe clean up the code. I don't think we need any of this now. Okay, let's go back. Let's see a few more paths. Oh wait, I think we did all the choices. Let's take our reach out of the bear. Yep. This is working nice. Okay. Let's clean it up a bit. Mm. Do we need all these? So I'm not using hide and show, uh, but yeah, I'm not using them at all, right? And it always gets hidden. It does get hidden when basically I show this option, right? Um, I'll get shown after I exit. I'll just keep it, this is fine. Uh, yeah, it's not worrying about that. All this is fine for now. Okay, story.yaml. This, uh, I think we can have it as a argument, right? Because this is our engine, right? Engine. So it should be more general. Um, so I think there is an environment. Uh, no, there's like a constant called args, which is a keyword, I believe. So let's just print line. Actually, let's just do two args. I think like if you any like if you pass anything to Julia, like Julia project dot and blah blah blah. After that, whatever you pass goes into this. I think this is an array. We'll see. It might also be an environment variable. I'm not sure. Let's say if I do hello. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, actually, I should. Uh, but you saw there, right? There was a. Uh, oops. There was this thing printed, right? args equal to hello. So basically, uh, if I pass more things here, they'll just be put into an array called args. So hello world yep hello and world okay um yeah that's all we need so this will be like our file name basically um and that is a file that will be executed as simple as that 
so arcs since so, so i'll have like arcs right i'll have arcs of one this will be the story file name okay and we can use this so contents equal to blah 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 story file name right um scene graph is this thing for scene and scene do this mm -hmm. actually we could just put this all this into a function called create scene graph right mm. so function create scene graph this can go inside this will take a file name file name i like to use underscores to separate words even though like for the ones that are readable it's recommended not to use them but yeah just like it so I just use them um file name file name right mm. notify scene graph is this thing so scene blah 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 and return scene graph okay right this will be the name of the scene and we, like we'll start with the this thing let's also put this into a function so this will be um, run fsm um, run game run game is run scene graph let's say run scene graph it need not return anything right uh so this will start with so we'll take in a scene name right and it'll take the scene graph and uh, so this will be like the start scene essentially start scene and scene graph and then it'll keep running right and uh, in the end here we'll call run scene graph with start scene and this will be oh we also need to call generate this thing right so for scene graph equal to create scene graph of story file name right and then this thing of start scene and the scene graph that is it and we can remove this oh actually name equal to start scene now since we have this inside like all this inside a function uh we need not do this global name i think that's just for the like when you're doing it working with like outside any function in files i think there's also some distinction between files and repel um yeah but inside the function it'll be treated as a local variable of this entire function so we can use it anywhere we want all this should be fine Mm. yes seems fine let's run it so instead of hello world we'll have story dot yaml hmm nice story file name is blah 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 anything else we need to clean up oh we could also call 
like since we are having start scene we can also have end scene and should we pass scene drop as the first thing maybe we should so start scene and end scene right so and uh, actually we should not call this as start scene because it's a start scene name technically but we'll come to that so start scene end scene if name is not equal to end scene right then do all this and when calling have scene graph passes the first argument then start scene then end scene okay so name start scene yeah uh, Okay. Also, yeah, so we should have like scene name, right? Instead of just name, uh, like as a variable here, we should have scene name. In the dictionary, it was okay because uh, like we are doing scene of name and even in the YAML, it's clear that since it's in a list of scenes, this will be scene name, this will be scene text, this will be scene choices, right? But here in the variable, let's make it more clear and uh, call it scene name instead of just name. This one is fine, okay. So scene name is start scene and this should be start scene name and scene name. Start scene name. Uh, this will be fine because this is a name uh, like this actual string that's used This is fine Hmm Okay. I don't think there's anything else we need to do here. This will be like scene text, maybe. Um, Yo, Vesta, what's up? Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, it's fine that you're late. Uh, no problem. One sec, just give me a second. I'll maybe give some brief overview as well. Uh... Oops. Okay, you got the notification, but didn't check it okay that's fine but at least it's good to know that you got the notification um yeah so i'm doing the engine thing that we discussed so i separated the story into a yaml file um, and i'm using yaml because well i could use yaml or json something like that right markup so i'm using yaml because this is much more readable than JSON and it seems nice. So within 50 lines, I've been able to put whatever limited story I had last time. So I'm not working on the story. Uh, what? <laughs> no, I don't hate myself. I love myself. And this looks nicer. So there's actually a couple of nuances with this. So one was um, that if I want to do some sort of dynamic 
story generation right let's say if i want to have um you know start example like welcome to this game right if i want to have welcome to this game did or something right or where this like name is generated at runtime taken by the user then i'll need to add some more like syntax like thing here that i parse in the engine and identify okay some variable needs to go there for now i'm not worrying about that so all this is static so this is like the old school um uh, choose your own adventure book right where like a book is like written once and nothing changes and yeah all the text is static so that's what we are limiting ourselves to right now um but this is nice and the engine is this 50 lines of code here which does running through the scene graph which is essentially just hopping from one state to another um say machine good use of templating engines oh yeah you mean for the yeah for this thing right um having some sort of marker like dollar or something uh yes i've never used it jinja or whatever run it run it run the game yeah i'm running the game this is not the this like the last time's bear story this is not uh yeah i'm yet to work with chat gpt okay welcome to this game press enter to continue you find yourself standing at the entrance to a mysterious cave choose wisely do you enter the cave to explore its secrets or turn around and run away as fast as you can what do you want to do run away yes good choice run away okay and you turn around and run away as fast as you can and you accidentally run into a bear do you stay calm or do you shout at the bear waste cave waste cave okay so that'd be like exiting the matrix do you want me to control c oh shout at the bear yeah shout at the bear and you involuntarily shout at the bear before realizing what you just did the bear get oh there's some <laughs> errors the bear gets scared and screams which in turn scares you and you faint thinking that the bear will attack you the bear then picks up your body and starts carrying you towards the cave yeah i know it's a little lame but that's what it is press enter to continue you enter the cave and dance with the bears and happy ending <laughs> okay press enter to exit i think i'm happy with the engine so far mm, i'll probably check this in and we can work on the story next time reminds me of something okay i'll save the link because otherwise oh wait no chat remains right should i open the video on the stream maybe not i'll check it out later <laughs> uh okay uh, let me check in this code no copyright okay we can check it out on the stream then if you say so i'm trusting you with this wait na cop na comma copyright dude I didn't get you. Na copy it. Oh, don't do this. You mean? Ha. Okay. Good. Good catch. Good catch. I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh, first time chat. Oh, Tejas. Tejas is here. nice yeah okay we'll watch the video later nice thanks yo tejas what's up time to ban hammer i don't know what that is uh anyways let me first just commit it and then we can maybe chat briefly um
yeah i'm fine with this code create scene graph from a file name file name is this story.yaml for now we pass this as an argument blah 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 yeah for now this is good enough i'll just commit it Okay, Banhammer seems to be another video, apparently. Uh, so make, actually remove story from rungame.jl and instead make it into an engine. story.yaml should i put the story in the game yeah it's fine we can check it in it's fine because the game and the story are they go hand in hand and story I don't know what you mean by equal quality. Oh, game and story. Story is not at all good quality. Uh, and for this kind of a game, mainly the story determines the quality of the game. So yeah, actually you can say roughly they are of equal quality. Since the story is bad, the game is bad right now. Uh, can you explain how they go hand in hand again? Because this is a text adventure. The main thing here is the text, which is the story. Let me just... Oh, actually, let... Did they just already see the story? We could have him play live. Uh... Oh, he did not? Okay, nice. They just uh, choose your own adventure. Okay. Let me zoom in. Okay. Press enter to continue. They just has been welcome to the game. Tejas finds himself standing at the entrance to a mysterious cave. Tejas chooses wisely. What does he choose? Does he choose to enter? Oh, he chooses to enter. Unfortunately, Tejas... Uh, oh, wait, one sec. Unfortunately, this has not been implemented yet. So, yeah. Bad luck. But you can start again, though. This time, make the right choice. Okay. So, do you want to repeat your mistakes or choose wisely, as Vaishnav says? Make me run away? Yep. Tejas is a fast runner. He'll run away. No need to enter mysterious caves. So Tejas turns around and runs away as fast as he can. And he accidentally runs into a bear. A bear, okay? A scary bear. What does Tejas do? Does he stay calm? Or does he shout at the bear? Tejas stays calm. Okay, Tejas stays calm. Nice. So he tries to stay calm and the bear looks at you and suddenly places a hand on your shoulder and tries to walk you towards the cave. Okay, you have no choice. The, the bear is taking you to the cave. Okay, even though you try to run away. And finally, you enter the cave and dance with the bears and happy ending. <laughs> How did the bear 
place its paws. Yeah, I don't know. On his shoulder, like this. Bears can stand, I think, right? So, yeah. So, they just, you found happy ending. Playing Pay Pass in the background. Yeah, it's a nice song. Yes, actually, uh, you know what? Actually, there might be like copyright issues, but I can, uh, like I can have some sort of music in the background. That's a good idea. I was going to add music to it eventually. And uh, yeah, I can actually do that. That's, that's a nice idea. If there's some like dancing going on in the cave with bears, then we can add music. Is the cave here, the, what? Is the cave here, the error cave? Error cave, is error cave something like specific that I'm not aware of or yeah, this is just the error. Oh no, this cave is not, this is not the error cave. So you can exit like this is happy ending. You just exit, no error. Okay, finally, let me also show Tejas what happens if he shouts at the bear. That's the funny one funnier one rather so they just ready you're turning around and running away as fast as you can and you accidentally ran into the same bear and instead of staying calm you shout at the bear okay you're like hey what the hell so you involuntarily shout at the bear before realizing what you just did you should not have shouted the bear the bear get scared right the bear gets scared but this time this bear it just get scared okay and screams which in turn scares you and you faint okay thinking that the bear will attack you obviously the bear is like four times your size let's say uh the bear then picks up your body and starts carrying you towards the cave so either way you get into the cave with the bear but yeah this one this time like you faint right you're not conscious the bear gets scared. Yes, the bear gets scared, Vashna. I feel like a streamer now. Like I'm interacting with my audience in a entertaining way. This feels good. Thanks, guys. Okay. That was mainly it. Um, let's let's end the stream, actually. You have made zero progress since I joined. Yeah, because he joined late. Dude, I made the entire engine today. You'll be able to see it in the recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, also, wait. I I actually wanted to announce this in the beginning. Uh, and you probably already know this. But I have this uh, channel. Did you? streams. This is the YouTube channel where I'm saving all my VODs or video on demands, like the recorded videos of Twitch, because Twitch will remove them after a week, unfortunately. So this is where they will be saved for everyone to see and for me to get embarrassed later on, but that's fine. Okay. Oh yeah, my camera is not always on the screen. I forget. Yep. Clip channel. Come on. What does clip channel mean? Oh, clip channel. Oh, okay. I think I get it. Clip. You mean like small clips of uh, my stream? I can do that. Um, actually, I can do that in Twitch as well. In Twitch, there's something called highlights, which uh, which are saved, sort of. Um, like, they don't get deleted. For now, let's just, let's just stick with creating content. We'll worry about clips later, I think, because I'll have to watch everything again and then think interesting parts. I can do that, but yeah, sometime later. But a good idea, though. Thanks. All right, guys. All right, let's... Let's finish off. Let's end the stream. I've already pushed this code. Yep. Cool. See you guys. Bye. Thanks for, thanks for dropping by.
and we need as well he was there earlier but yeah cool uh where is all right bye do you have any other stream accounts okay they just asked this at the last point do you have another stream account no this is the only streaming account that i have so youtube this is uh, so the twitch one is where i actually stream right i stream on twitch and then i save those on youtube on this account this has just streams my other youtube channel is like for normal content like tutorials and stuff that is just at siddharth dash patia i wanted to keep them separate because uh, yeah okay this is a clean stream let's keep things clean all right see you folks bye